Okay, we are back. It is about 10.32 here on Sunday morning, January the 10th, 2021. See, I got all that right. Got the time and the date. I'm going to tell you where I'm at. So we'll do the place as well. I'm up here in the pastor's study here at Oakland United Methodist Church here at 801 Northeast Chester in Topeka. As you can see behind me, I've got a lot of my resources here, a lot of books. Cut the heat turned on when I got in this morning. You can imagine it's a little chilly up here in the pastor's study. And so it's feeling pretty good right now. So I'm so glad you could be with us. Good morning, Charlene. Good to see you here. So we got several already tuning in. And today, of course, is the second Sunday of 20. 21. So we're rolling on through the year here. And today is also known as the Epiphany Sunday and also Baptism of the Lord. Now, Epiphany in some places might have been celebrated last week, and we're just sort of observing both of those today at the same time. I think some Methodist churches are doing that today. So again, you remember the Epiphany has to do with the time when the Magi or the wise men from the East came following the star and they found the young child Jesus and they came and worshipped him and brought him the different gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh as we read in the scriptures. It's one of those dramatic stories, really a wonderful story. And then they had to go back to uh, their countries by a different route because uh, God had told them, don't go back through the way you came in. For goodness sakes, don't tell Herod where you found Jesus. But of course, Mary and Joseph also had gotten word from the Lord to take Jesus into Egypt and where they stayed for a few years until Herod passed away and the threat of death to the young Jesus was gone. So quite a story, quite a tale. We remember that on this Sunday as well as the baptism of our Lord. We're really going to look more at the baptism of our Lord today because that's really the extent of the scriptures today. I can't really go farther into this than to say this, though. We had for many years at Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church had an annual epiphany observance, kind of a celebration, and Gary Myers was so instrumental in putting that together. And so this year, of course, we can't do that. And so we are hoping that we'll be able to get back together here before too long. Again, don't really have a specific date in mind yet as we're completely off the charts here, as you guys probably know, in Topeka, Shawnee County with our virus readings over on the far right in the red. As far as it'll go, 24 out of 24. So it's probably not a good idea to be getting back together just yet. As a matter of fact, I read something, I believe, a couple of days ago from our office, and it sounds like almost all United Methodist churches are close to in-person gatherings. So we are not alone. Don't feel like you're the only ones. And it will be hopefully a, a time in the near future that we will be able to get back together. Don't really have a whole lot of other announcements for you other than as we do continue on through our online platforms, do continue to check our Facebook page. I try to add things to it several times a week just to kind of keep you posted. I think that might be the easiest way right now to reach folks. So again, if you're on here right now, then you know how to get on it. But if, if you would ever want to just tell somebody, just facebook.com and then you do the forward slash and then hit just Topeka Pastor and that'll get you to this page. Of course, I think to get on, you got to have a Facebook account. So we had quite a meeting up here Thursday with several of us here at the church just going over what we could do to help facilitate people's abilities if they're struggling with the Facebook issues and just how to get on. And so we might call upon you to help walk people through it. If you know people that are struggling, maybe you can show them how to do it. And uh, the other thing I'm hoping to do here in the next uh, week or so is to see if we can't find a few kind of team captains to, again, intentionally have a group of four or five people, maybe six or seven even, that they would sort of be responsible for. So I'm kind of going to call them shepherds, and then they would have their their little uh, flocks, I guess you'd call them, but they would be responsible for some of the people in the church just to stay in touch with them, to keep them posted on things going on in the church, answer any questions they might have, listen to any concerns, maybe pray with them. And certainly if there's a major issue to then let me know as well. as so Anybody can call me, of course. That's always an option, 785-224-6432. It's 
I think it's even on our Facebook page. So if you call me and I don't answer, just leave a message or send me a text message and I'll try to get back to you. Not always going to be able to answer maybe right when you call, but I will certainly try my best to get you answered back as soon as I can. Again, 785-224-6432. And it's on the Facebook page as well. So it's it's out there. Again, if, if you need anything, just let me know. But again, I'm trying to assign some people uh, these ministry opportunities that we're finding now that are out there with us. And, and if you're so inclined and you would like to maybe be one that would be responsible for several people, if you'd let me know, then just send me a text message and say, hey, I'd be interested in being kind of a shepherd to these people because it's real vital that we, we get a lot of people involved. You know, everybody's a minister. If you're in the church and you believe in Christ, then you're a minister, whether you're in the clergy or the pastoral positions or not. Hey, Teresa, welcome. Tell your family I said hello. See, I see a lot of people joining us today. It's amazing how many people will join us live. And then I look back at these a few days later and maybe it goes from like 25 or 30 up to 75. So people are really finding these. And so we do want to continue with our our Facebook Lives and just some of the things we're doing now that a lot of churches have been doing for a while. Well, we're just kind of starting, but we're working on ways to take what we've got and what we've started and to improve upon them. And so we did have this meeting up here the other day with several of us just kind of going over some things we might want to try to do as we go forward into this. So again, thank you for joining us today. Let's go ahead and start with... A prayer, and I'm going to read a prayer today that I found from the Portals of Prayer devotional from the, actually it's from the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. It's a real nice devotional guide I've been able to get a hold of, and it's for this Sunday is the Baptism of Our Lord. So if you would just join me in this prayer. Jesus, before your baptism, John the Baptist heralded you as the Lamb of God. How wondrous that you are both the Lamb sacrificed for us and also the shepherd who leads us. In my baptism, you made me your precious lamb. Through your Holy Spirit, guide me so that I always hear and follow your voice alone as there are many false shepherds in our world today. It's in your name I pray. Amen. So that's our discussion, uh, or our prayer, I should say, as we get started today for our discussion. You know, these sermons are more discussions than prayers, and I invite you to send in a comment. I usually try to read them. If I see them, I can usually see these for, are pretty uh, visible to me because the lighting is pretty good in here, and I can actually see my phone. But today we're, again, going to be looking at the second week of uh, January's assigned scripture passages, which are from Genesis and from Psalms and from Acts. And the one we're going to start our sermon on today is from John. So we do the other ones earlier in the Sunday school hour. So if you miss those, we're not going to rehash them here. But you can go back and find them on the Sunday school hour that lasted right at 30 minutes today. And go back there and you'll be able to hear all those other sermon uh, sections today. We we I will just summarize them real quick. The 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 the, the first one was from Genesis one verses one to five, and and I found it interesting after I had titled this sermon today back to square one. I realized that was the the Old Testament reading today was from Genesis one one to five. I said, well, how much farther back can you go to square one than that? That is the square one, and you know it starts out in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. So it's a, it's just a the story of the creation. And then we read that, that, that as God created the, the world, it was, it was void and dark and, and no form, and then he hovered over the waters. And then we read in our Psalm 29 how the God of glory hovers, is, is over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. So God's God's there. You know, that's the great thing. We don't always see him, but we know he's there. He's, he's, he is revealing himself through so many different aspects of our lives, through so many different avenues. He is revealing himself to us. And, and then the psalm goes about saying, praise the Lord, give him glory, give him honor, ascribe majesty to him because he has done all these great things. And that's so vital that we do make sure that we give God his due, I guess you would say. Hello, Sarah. Welcome back. So so honor the Lord and, and just sometimes that may be your prayer. Lord, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your greatness. I thank you for 
all of the creation that you've made for showing me who you are and for revealing yourself to me. You know, that's that's really the marvelous thing. I was telling somebody the other day, there was a devotional I read about the stars and the galaxies. And this gentleman said, you know, and here to think that the creator of all of these things, many of which we've never even seen or discovered, knows me personally and created me and designed me and had a plan for my life and a purpose for my life before the world ever began. So that's the beauty of knowing about the greatness of God is that he, again, he knitted us together in our mother's womb. But even before that in Jeremiah, it says, God knew me before I was born. He knew who I was from the foundation of time. God had a plan for me. He knew me. Sometimes we might feel like, you know what, I'm a nobody. I mean, it doesn't really matter whether I'm here or not. God's, you know, is a big God. I'm a little person. So it doesn't really matter. Well, yes, it matters because he has a plan and a purpose for you. If you're hearing this message, he's got something for you to do. Maybe just with your family, maybe a prayer ministry. Maybe all you're going to do is pray, but that's not all you're going to do because that's huge. That's vital. And we want people to pray for these churches that, that, that we are affiliated with here in Topeka, here in Oakland and in Kansas. And we keep praying for these churches and that God's going to keep us motivated. It's going to keep us serving him and showing the light of Christ to our neighbors and our world around us. So so keep praying. That's a huge, a vital ministry. Then God may have something else for you. We've got people in both churches that are very involved in helping get food out to the people in our communities here. You know, without naming them, I think we all kind of know who they are. We're so grateful that they're able to do that. And, you know, their ministry may not be your ministry. You may have a different ministry than they do. But it's like the body that, that we read about in the New Testament. All parts of the body work together. They're all important. They're all needed. They're all vital. The, 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 the eye can't tell the ear. He doesn't need him. And, and the ear can't tell the foot. It doesn't need it. You know, we, we're all needed. We're all vital, regardless of where we find ourselves. And so God's going to use you if you let him. And again, today, I think really the most important thing we're going to talk about here as we read our scripture is how vital it is that we go back to square one to make sure that we are on the right track. It's easy to get pulled off track, isn't it? So oftentimes things kind of come up, whether it's in the world around us or maybe it's in our own personal lives and just things that don't always go just the way we wish they would have gone. And it causes us a lot of apprehensions and difficulties. So we're going to look at this scripture passage today. And it's found in Mark, the Gospel of Mark, verse uh, chapter 1 and verses 4 to 11. So as you know, Mark is the second book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And of course, Mark is one of those three Gospels known as the Synoptic Gospels because there's a lot of similarities in their stories, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so today we're in the book of Mark, and I'm going to read it to you. I've got it right here, but I'm trying to get it to uh, you from the New International Version. I just thought I would read that today from uh, this version. So let's go ahead and read it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Now John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So that's the story today, the Gospel of Mark chapter 1 and verses 4 to 11. And again, it's the story of Jesus being baptized. And of course, this Sunday is known as the Baptism of the Lord Sunday. So the, the title of today's sermon is Back to Square One. Back to Square One. I, I thought that was an interesting uh, title simply because we're at the beginning of a year here as we 
are starting out 2021. And it's a time, again, where we see a lot of things going on around us that we are reminded, I believe, once again, that God is in control. We're not in control. I think we learned that last year, didn't we, with the coronavirus? If we hadn't learned it before, then I think we all learned that there were so many things that came into our world, into our lives. I don't know anybody who wasn't directly affected in one way, shape, or form by COVID-19. Everybody had to make adjustments. Everybody had to change the way they did things. I mean, we all still are doing that, I hope. It's far from over. We're learning to adapt to it. It seems like, you know, it's old hat now to go out and make sure you've got your mask. I remember at first how difficult that was to, oh, gee, I forgot my mask at home. I remember going to the store a couple of times and having to turn around and go back home because I left my mask at home, you know. So pretty much now we always carry our mask with us. In fact, I always carry a second one in my pocket just in case I forgot my other one that I really prefer to use. So, you know, we've all had to learn to adjust. And we've also learned that there are things that we can't always do the way we would like to do. Things don't always go the way we would like them to go. And so it's easy to get disoriented. It's easy to get pulled off track for all of us. And, you know, it's, and, and, and it's not just not the things that are going on around us in, in our city, in our state, in our nation, and in our world. There's things going on in our private personal lives that are difficult that we are dealing with for a lot of us. And how do we come to grips with those difficulties? How do we stay on track spiritually when it's so easy to get pulled astray? Isn't it so easy to get pulled off? You know, and I, I was thinking about this yesterday when I was finalizing this sermon for today, again called Back to Square One. And one of the things that really hit me was I just don't believe we can afford the luxury of a bad day. We 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 have choices that we make. We we have choices about how we view things. We have choices about how we let things affect us. We we can either respond in a positive way or we can respond in a negative way. You know, we have a brand new year. We have a fresh start. You know, people were waiting for the brand year new year 2021. They couldn't wait till 2021 came. Well, folks, it's here. <laughs> and we found there's a lot of challenges in 2021, just like there was in 2020. If it was as easy as changing the pages on a calendar, if it was as easy as putting a new calendar on the wall, one mark 2021 instead of 2020, if that's all it was going to take to make things different and better, it would have been a piece of cake, wouldn't it? But we find already now, just 10 days into the new year, that it's more difficult than maybe we we're wanting ourselves to believe. I think we all just wanted to change, and I, and, I, and I can understand it, and I appreciate that, and I get it. But the reality is, until we change our hearts, friends, until we change the way we think, and we change our mindset, there would, there's not going to be very many real substantial, uh, substantial changes in our lives. And I believe that Christ came to change us from the inside out. So the question today is, do you find yourself struggling? Do you find yourself just sort of dealing with being out in the wilderness? You know, we, we did the sermon series in Exodus of, of, of being out in the wilderness, and, and we titled it Through the Wilderness. It wasn't Into the Wilderness. Into the Wilderness is like, here we are, we're stuck. I think that's a big part of where we're all at today. A lot of us feel like we are now in the wilderness, and yet as a Christian, we know that we are going through the wilderness Things aren't always going to be great. It's going to be a difficult trek. We don't know exactly how long it's going to take to get through to the other side, to the promised land. But we know if, if we stay in touch with Christ, if we stay in communion with him, if we stay in relationship with Christ, that he is going to get us through the desert. He's going to get us through the darkness, and he's going to get us to the promised land. And folks, we can start praising him right now for doing that. We don't have to wait till it's here because we have confidence that he's going to do it. So all of us now today, we can start to praise the Lord that he's got this under control. I still go back to the ads I see off of the highways. Mike's got this. Call 444-4444. Somebody call that number and find out if Mike's on there. and We'll get him on here. No, I'm kidding. We'd love to have Mike watching. But at any rate, here's the deal. God's got this. The one that's ultimately got it is God. We found out last year that we're not in control like we thought we were. And that we have to now rely 
completely on Christ? Are you relying completely on Christ? Have you completely submitted to him? Or do you find out maybe things upset you, things bother you, things get you off track? You're, you're preoccupied, almost obsessed with certain things that you just cannot let go of because they're not quite the way you want them then I would suggest that you're not completely submitted to Christ because if we are, we're going to be praising him in all situations. It doesn't mean we're going to like him, but we're going to be praising him and we're going to see the hand of God It's going to be getting us through these difficult times. We're not going to be going, where is God in this? We're going to be saying, thank you, God, for getting me through this. Thank you for letting me see another day. You know, we're in 2021 now. We've got the new year. That's what we wanted. Now let's make the most of it. Amen? So, so let's look at some of the things that are going on here. We all want to see a year of peace. We all want to see a year of prosperity. And we want to see a year where we're stepping out of the darkness and into the light. I think we can all agree on that. Amen. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on politically. I don't care what your social values are. Maybe even your religious values. I think we all would say, I would hope, that we would like to see a year of peace and prosperity, not just for some people, but for all people. I want everybody to prosper. Remember, I've told you stories where I've been around people and they almost seem resentful if one person gets a blessing. It's almost like, well, where's my blessing? I don't get one, you know? And and it's, and, and yeah, when, when, when I see somebody that's doing well, I praise the Lord. I thank God for taking care of that situation for that person. And I pray that that person then will ascribe the majesty and the honor and the glory to the one who got them to where they're at also, so that that person would, would give God the honor and God the praise, so, so that we see God as the source of all of our good things. You know, we, we were talking a, a lot in 2020 about we knew that God was with us, and we know he's still with us, even as we're in 2021, and there's still challenges, there's still things that we have to deal with. God is still with us, so we, we talk about the presence of God in our lives. And yet something that I read early this morning really struck me. And that was, we know God is present with us. How about us now going into the presence of God ourselves? How about us taking the time to really put ourselves in the position where we now are in God's presence? And I think there's a big difference. God is present with us. He's done what he's going to do. Have we reciprocated? Have we responded? And now we are showing God that we want to be in his presence. How do we do that? You know, to me, it's really not that hard. We, 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 first of all, we just allow God to have some time in our lives. We just think about God. We, 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 we try to empty out our mind as much as possible. Let God feel it. Let God talk to us. We get in the word. Certainly, God speaks to us through the word, just like he did in Psalms and Genesis and Acts and John. Uh, and, and Mark, you know, all the Gospels. As we were saying in Sunday school, if you want to revolutionize your life, get into Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Just read it every day for about a month. Man, it'll change your life. And, and it's, it's just the way of seeing things. So we know that God is with us. Now let's enter into his presence. Let's get in those Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Let's get into the rest of the New Testament as well. And don't forget the Old Testament because it shows the hand of God all those years leading up to the introduction of Jesus Christ as our Savior, as the Messiah, the chosen one, the promised one who came into the world. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. So so we, we got the living word of God. That's one way of being in the presence of God. We pray. Just seek out the Lord. Just spend time with him. You know, you may go to sleep, as you said. You know, I'm going to give God five minutes. You may find yourself going to sleep. You know what? That's a start. What did we say the other day? It was uh, that saying that I really liked, if I can come up with it. Um... I would rather have imperfect action than perfect inaction. I would rather have imperfect action on my part. At least I'm trying to do something I believe God wants me to do. Imperfect though it may be, than perfect inaction where I say, you know what, I can't do it. I'm just not going to do anything. And it's like those the, parent, the, the parable of the talents, remember, where the guy with the one talent just said, you know, that was what I call perfect inaction, where he just buried it and didn't do anything. And, of course, the master wasn't pleased because God gave him some things to do. He gave him the message of salvation. He, if nothing else, he gave him the message of hope. And the person just sat on it and buried it. We're to share what God gives us. So, so, so let's do that through prayer, through Bible reading, Bible study, and then through fellowship. You know, find people you can talk to on the phone. Maybe you can also get a hold of folks who uh, 
maybe you're watching this online. I see Michelle's joining us. Welcome, Michelle. And maybe there's folks here that are watching. And, and right now, you know, just reach out on the phone. And you can have fellowship on the phone even if, if we can't get together physically just yet. There's a lot of ways we can do it. Let's don't give up. Let's don't bury our talents and our treasures and say, we'll just wait till we can all get back together again. We don't know when that's going to be. We hope it's soon. It may be a, it may be a little while yet. We don't know. So, so, so use what God gave you today. That's all you're responsible for is today. Not for six months down the road or whenever the coronavirus gets under control. We, we, we can't control that. Again, it's out of our control. So if you find yourself in that mentality of, I, I can't do anything. I'm helpless and I feel hopeless. Come back to square one. So let's let's look at this today as we as we as we go through this. The first thing I believe to do to get to square one is that we put our pride aside and we realize that we have to empty ourselves of our selfish desires, of our selfish motives, of putting ourselves first. Put our offenses to the side where we feel like someone has said something or done something that's really been unkind and unfair. Just put all that aside and seek the Lord. Asking for his forgiveness. You know, we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've Unfortunately, a lot of people have been hurt. We don't want to minimize that. But on the other hand, if that's holding us back, we've got to let it go. We've got to give it to the Lord. So humble yourself and, and, and put your pride aside and seek the Lord. I like what Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24 says as David is saying this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know of my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. I always look at that verse. You know what? Remember the disciples the night that they were having the Last Supper and Jesus said, one of you will betray me. And what did they all say? They didn't start pointing at each other. So oh, I bet it was Judas or I think I'll, I'll give you, I'll bet you 20 bucks it was Peter over here. No, they all said, is it I? Is it me? Did I? Am I the one, Lord? I think that's the attitude of humility that we've got to take is, Lord, we're not perfect. Help us to realize our imperfection and now to admit those to you, even areas that we may not even be aware of. But Lord, help us to come to you and put our pride aside and admit, Lord, that we are sinners. We've fallen short of your grace and of your glory, of your goodness. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. So that's the first thing I think we do to get back to point, to get back to ground one, to get back to square one, is to admit that we need to be forgiven. That, and that entails knowing that we have made mistakes, we've made, we, we've sinned, and yet, yet, Lord, the Lord knows we're not alone. We've all been there. We're all on the same ground. You know, I, as I've said many times, we're all on equal ground at the foot of the cross. There's not a, there's not some people higher up than others. We are all on level ground. I don't care whether you're the richest person in the world or the poorest, the worst sinner, or the one that probably sinned the least. You're all on equal ground, because you know what? We've all sinned, and that one little blemish is all it takes. We don't have perfection, and now we've been separated from God. So we're all on equal ground at the foot of the cross, and we need Christ to come into our hearts to give us that relationship and that forgiveness so that we can now have that bridge that leads us back to God the Father, and that's all done through Christ. So. So we're all we're all at that point. So let's all go back to square one. Maybe that's a starting point. Is just to go back and seek His forgiveness and say, Lord, look in my heart. See if there's any wicked way. Lord, I, I'm not going to say I'm right. I, I I don't know it all. You know, some people I think have that mentality that their way is right and everybody else is wrong. But guess what? We don't always we're not always sure about that. As we get older, especially, I think we realize, you know what? I may be wrong. And I've told people a lot of times. You know, I I always try to realize. This is where I'm at right now, but you know maybe God will change my mind, change my heart because because right now I've been I've had enough experiences where I, I wish that things that I was doing at one point I hadn't done or things I thought a certain way maybe God had to change those. So be open to the Lord wherever you're at in your life. I don't care where you are. Be open to the Lord and let Him affect how you see the world and how you respond to things that are going on in your life and in the and in the and in, uh, in your little world of your own uh, your own maybe your own personal life maybe it's your family your friends your coworkers your neighbors however you want to define it and then ask God to give you his world view and I love that world the Christian world view 
because I believe that means we're coming from the Bible, we're coming from the scriptures, and that we see everything through that perspective. Amen? So that we are getting our uh, direction from the Lord. I heard a guy the other day say, so many people spend, a lot of people spend more time on Facebook than they do the good book, you know? And, and, and there's probably a lot of truth in that. So let's all plan to spend a little more time in the Bible. Amen? That's a good starting point to get back to square one. So, Number two would be humbling ourselves before God. And I believe that entails submitting to God and deciding that we're now going to obey him. Oh, that's a challenge for a lot of people because they don't want to give up them, their, their selves. They don't want to give up the way they think. They don't want to give up the way they act. They don't want to give up their desires. They don't want to give up maybe the things that they really like, their preferences on whatever it might be, the things they like to do. So much of our lives in America, it seems, that revolve around just doing things that make us happy, just gratifying ourselves, you know? And I don't think that's really what the Bible tells us to do. We know we're to be serving others, and we're to submit ourselves to the Lord. You know, Romans 12, 2 says, you know, we should be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. That's our reasonable service for all he's done for us. So, you know, it's just a constant reminder that our self the flesh always rises up. It kind of bubbles up from below. So let's put a lid on that and remember that we have to humble ourselves before the Lord, seek his face, and, and submit to him. James 4.10 says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So many people, and maybe I've been there at some point, maybe you have, where we are concerned about, well, if we would humble ourselves in the front of the Lord, you know, you know, maybe we would... Uh, have uh, lost uh, our uh, standing in our uh, society or maybe we would have lost our uh, things that we've worked for, let's say. People might have that idea. It says here, if we'll humble ourselves before the Lord, he will lift us up. Let God lift you up. Let God lift me up. We don't have to be trying to uh, outmaneuver the person next to us, you know, and try to get that leg up on them. Amen. So, so let's let's just let the Lord lift us up, and that's done when we humble ourselves. Jesus, in our gospel reading today, humbled himself when he was baptized. He did not need to be baptized. He had not sinned. He was not going to sin, and yet he he allowed himself to be baptized by his cousin John, that fiery preacher, as we would call him today maybe, uh, John the Baptist, so that he would set an example for us, that we would be baptized and show that by baptism we have now made that public declaration that we are now putting to death our old self with all of its sins, with all of its selfish desires, with all of its rebellious ways, and now when we come up out of the water, just like when Jesus raised from the dead out of those after three days, he was he had he had got new life, and that when we come up out of the water of baptism, now we have a new life. It's a new life that comes to us through Christ. So the old is gone, the new has come. It should be a brand new way of living. So we don't want to go back to the old way. You know, and if we find ourselves back to that's what I'm saying. We got to go back to square one, and and let's just start making it as simple as we can to get back to that point where we have that relationship with Christ that He wants us to have. Why why do we want that relationship? Because that's the way God intended us to live. You know, if you want to live in a life of anger and bitterness and hostility and frustration and all the other things that go along with that, then you probably aren't necessarily going to be interested. And what Christ has to offer, because Christ is going to take all those things away from you. And friends, I, I have probably known a lot of people in my life who seem to be very preoccupied by just being angry at anybody that doesn't think just like they do, or act like they do, or talk like they do, or live quite like they do. Whereas God's telling us we need to love everyone. That should be the mark of the Christian, is to love other people, the way Christ has loved us. We were just reading in our Sunday school class, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter, what was it? Chapter 4, verse 1, I think. And it was just saying, look, let love be your goal. And, you know, and the verse goes on, but I thought, you know, if we could just remember that, let love be your goal. So that when we are presented with the option of being angry or being upset or saying things that aren't very kind, let's let love be our guide. And that will cover a multitude of sins, is love. 
when we look at the idea of submitting ourselves to Christ, I believe there will be another benefit. And one of those is going to be that we receive the mind of Christ. And then you go, well, what's the mind of Christ? And I'm not going to read this whole section here, but you can read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where we realize that when we give ourselves over to the Lord, that he's going to impart his wisdom for us, and he's going to give us his mind of Christ. He's going to give us discernment and things that we would otherwise not be able to figure out. And he's going to help us to navigate through these difficulties, especially right now. I would think a lot of people would be interested in how do I navigate through these difficult times? How do I have peace in the midst of the storms that are going on all around me? You find it through Christ. Christ will get you through it and he will give you the wisdom to love people. I really believe once we love people, all of the anger, everything else just sort of fades away. If we really love other people. So that's really our goal, I believe, today as we as we complete uh, this idea of going back to square one. There was one other part here that I wanted to share with you and as we uh, get ready to wrap this up today. And that is that when we submit to the Lord, we receive now the Holy Spirit. You see, when Jesus was baptized, remember the, the heavens opened up, so we had Jesus Christ, the Son of God, then we heard the voice of God the Father, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. So there's the Father, there's the Son, and then the Holy Spirit comes down on Jesus like a dove. So we have right there the evidence of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all present with Jesus at his baptism. And again, his baptism came as an example for us that we should submit ourselves to God. And also Jesus was identifying with the human race. Even though he was fully God and he was fully human, he was now identifying himself with us. Jesus knows everything you've been through, friends. He knows exactly your struggles. He's He's been there. He's There's not a temptation that's come to any of us, but that Jesus wasn't tempted in that way. And yet he was without sin. So when you find yourselves struggling, and maybe just trying to make sense of everything that's going on. Maybe you're just having issues with hanging in there throughout this coronavirus. Maybe it's the things going on in the world around us. Maybe there's other issues that are affecting you just because you've had it. You've just you, you you've reached that boiling point, or you reached the wall, and and you found that you just seem like you can't go any farther. You know, and I go back there. You could have physical issues. You could have mental issues. You could have spiritual issues. You could have financial issues. You could have relationship issues going on. All kinds of struggles. We all we all deal with some, some of those at some time. Maybe some people are dealing with all of them at the same time. But Jesus Christ is there, friends, for you, if you will but turn to him. Remember, Jesus said, uh, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll give you my peace if you'll just come to me. I think the world today is desperately in need of peace. I think a lot of individuals also are desperately in need of peace, but we're not going to find the peace outside of Jesus Christ. The old bumper sticker I loved, it said, no peace, no Jesus. No peace, no Jesus. So if you want, if you, if you want to know what peace is, in no peace, there'll be no Jesus. In no Jesus. If you really want to know peace, K-N-O-W, you know Jesus, then you'll know peace, K-N-O-W. You'll know it. If you really want to make that your goal, remember Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. He wants us to come and be agents of light. He wants us to be agents of reconciliation in our world. There's plenty of business opportunities there for you. You know, a lot of job openings in that area, I would think, right? If you're looking for some work to do, how about being an agent of reconciliation, bringing people together, praying for people, talking with people, listening, just really taking the time to get to know people. And God's going to bless you as you show the light of Christ and as you bless them. So this is the this is the goal as we go ahead and look at our start of this year. The difficulties around us, remember, God is in control. He loves you. He's with you. He is present with you in your life, wherever you're at today. If you open yourself up to him and you go into his presence, I believe God's got a whole array of blessings just waiting for you. 
Open yourself up to them so you can receive them. Remember, today is a day of salvation. Today is the day of a new beginning. And yes, today is the day to return to square one. No matter where you are, no matter where you've been, seek the Lord and let him be your guide. Amen? Let's pray as we end our time together today. Lord, thank you again for being with us, Lord, being our guide, being our comforter. Lord, you, you, you sent the Holy Spirit to come down and comfort us, Lord, to guide us, to lead us. And Lord, we, we welcome the Holy Spirit today into our midst and into our lives. Lord, help us now to have this newness as this new year unfolds, Lord, that we will be able to navigate through the challenges so that we can serve you and show your light to those around us. And we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining us today. I hope that you have a great Sunday. And pay attention to our Facebook page. I'll be getting some information out this week. Also, I may be getting out an email, hopefully, by the end of the week. We're going to try to get our teams going where we're going to have our shepherds watching out for some of the folks in the church to help out and just stay in touch here as we get through these winter months. And right now, I just want to tell you so how, how much I appreciate you being here. Six o'clock tonight, we'll be back for our Route 66 Scripture Memory course. That'll last about 15 or 20 minutes if you can join us. If you miss it, you can always catch it late after the service uh, today. So we'll always put it back on Facebook Live. Uh, those Facebook Live then go over to our website, kaumc.church. So blessings to all of you. Thank you, Polly. God bless you. And you guys have a great Sunday. Hope to see you soon. And hopefully our days of doing virtual services only will be numbered. But in the meantime, we're going with God and we're trusting in him. Amen. Have a great day.